Pin. I learned that word today. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I'll you know. You know what else I I came across today? Um, ultra. Is it ultra crespidalian? Crespidu. You know what that means? Have you ever heard uh, that word? No. No. Yeah. So ultra crepidarian. Here's what it means. It refers to somebody who expresses opinions on matters outside the scope of their knowledge or expertise. Nice. Well, I'll be putting that one on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that might be me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'll, I'll do a, an official intro and add it on to the, the, the top of this. Um, I want to thank you guys for um, the quick notice agreeing to come on here and um, and talk with me. The the thing that I that I mentioned to the two of you, we'll do Tim first because Tim, you're younger than than Andy, right? No, I'm older. I'll be 52 this year, so I'm about a year, half Man. older. Yeah. Wow. What happened to all of the 30 something year old JKD people, huh? Oh, we got a few of them in class down here. We got some younger ones, even. We, we're trying to steal their youth and their vigor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, in all the back and forth that, um, that we've gone through over the past few days, I noticed something, Tim, that you said, having studied academic writing. Mm -hmm. Taught right? it, even. Yeah. yeah, and taught it. Okay. So I wanted to um, I wanted to ask you about that then how how does that um, how do you use that in debate and discussion? Well, um, stuff? anytime you're talking about academic writing, you're you're talking about research, and you're going to cite your sources, and you are going to use several sources, and mm -hmm. you're going to also look at opinions that do not agree with your thesis or your conclusions uh, because you need to look at both sides or many sides and I believe to go about I mean at least it's an officially recognized way to go about looking at getting to what we would consider true right so yeah because I guess um, I guess some people just consider truth to be well I heard this and um, I saw this so that's truth because yeah you saw it right and in in our case a magazine article right you saw a magazine article so isn't that fact that the magazine article exists as opposed to truth well yeah sure the magazine you know article. What I mean? Yeah, the magazine article exists or magazine articles exist. And I mean, I've spent enough time in uh, multimedia as well, journalism to kind of tell you how that may or may not be uh, truth. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's especially when you're talking about an interview, you're talking about the expression or someone's version of something. And that's one source, one of many. If, you know, if you're if you're looking at researching, you're going to uh, look at all sources. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So I think then we have a lack of store, uh, a lack of multiple sources and then even confirmation from sources or confirmation from um, authoritative sources. Right. Yeah. What we have, what we have here is, well, I heard this and here's this magazine article. So that proves that I'm right. Yeah, exactly. Right, and and yeah. and that proves that I'm right about someone else who's not even in the article, but who yeah. is who is somewhat part of the discussion. But that proves that I'm right about that person. Yeah, so sounds to, yeah. Academic Chinese whispers or something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then. Andy, the thing, the thing that makes, so that's what makes me envious of Tim. The thing that makes me envious of you is you're having studied, it's religious studies and philosophy. Right. 
I was a religious or a philosophy major, religious studies, and was my minor. Yeah, see, I don't qualify to talk to people like the two of you. Ah, uh, of course. I, I, I failed. I failed five O levels in high school. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. capture retention. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> harder than uh, you know than what they're giving you the credit for. Yeah. So okay. So then, Andy, how how do you then approach comp discussion, especially these types of discussions that we have in JKD? Well, my instinct is to basically just focus on what is knowable, what is actually knowable. Um, so, and the thing that that is most kind of bothered me about the way that I see these discussions going on is that. Um, when it comes to JKD and Bruce Lee, everybody wants to focus on Bruce Lee's writings. Although Bruce Lee didn't intend his writings to be published yet, they weren't in a finished product. Right. So, so when Tim and I were talking about this with sources, you know, you have layers of sources. It's like, obviously that's one of your primary sources, but by any means whatsoever, the surviving people that Bruce Lee trained would be primary to the writings, potentially, they would be right up there with the writings. Um, and it reminds me so much of uh, in religious studies, basically, are you talking about the Bible, like in Christianity? So it, basically, the four Gospels are supposed to be the, the primary sources within the Bible, but yet they weren't written by the people that they were claimed to be written by. They're not firsthand accounts from what we can tell mm -hmm. historically. So so it's almost like that's that's a thing that we're looking at here is uh, the the writings are are only part of the context. You have to try to get the oral history. The oral history has to be taken into account wherever it appears, and then you have to put everything together and then try to decide what's knowable based on the information you have. Yeah. Um, and, and, okay. So. The timer up here says that we've been on for seven and a half minutes. We could cut this short to like eight minutes and just come up with the solution for all this nonsense right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because let me ask you this. What was your life like? I want to answer from, from, from both of you. What was your life like before Facebook? <laughs> Tim, Tim first. Oh, me. Okay. Well, uh, before Facebook, uh, I'm not very much of a sit around homebody anyway. So, uh, I don't think it was overly different than what it is now, other than I've got a heck of a lot of insight into people. I barely, barely know their deep thoughts, which is you know good and bad. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I, the positive, I know more people or I'm connected to more people. The negative is I'm connected to more people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right yeah. and you i i think i didn't find myself in such um conversations with people that i didn't know uh like like you do with facebook you know there there just kind of wasn't that you know and especially when, when we want to if we want to call these different factions or different camps or, or whatever we want to call the different sides of these arguments I generally, I don't think I was in much contact with people that would have been in another camp. In fact, I don't even really knew, know of the existence of quote unquote other camps, honestly. And mm -hmm. you know, I never knew that there was a split uh, like, like there is, to be honest with you. So I guess it was more harmonious <laughs> in that respect. Right, yeah. I mean, just not, not knowing about them yeah. made your life more harmonious. Right. The ignorance was bliss. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. In my experience with, with Facebook, I, I, I normally hate publicity. I hate being on Facebook. I usually post nothing personal. Um, but the last year, two years have been interesting. Um, I'm just not, I'm at home more with my kids right now. I think I've made, made some jokes online. For me personally, I'm just at home. I got a two year old surprise baby. Um, so I'm sitting around babysitting her. That's why I, that's wow. why I have more. That's why I have more time to be on Facebook and get into arguments. Um, <laughs> normally, normally I pride myself on not being on Facebook, um, so I'm hoping that I can change that pretty damn pretty damn quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I used to spend 
um, six minutes a week on Facebook because I wrote um, I wrote a blog for my school and then somebody said you should put it up on Facebook as well so I, I wrote that blog Monday Wednesday and Friday so after writing it would because I would I would I would literally I would write it I would wake up at 6 a.m and start writing and try to have it done by 8 a.m Wow and then I would post it on Facebook and that would be it that would be my Facebook contribution for the day right and I did that for eight years or something but um, three years ago when we kind of felt did we lose uh, we lost Andy I don't know I saw him blip yeah it looks like he went away wait hang on okay well he'll press it is uh we'll we'll press on he'll he'll come back in um so yeah so that's that used to be my facebook existence but then three years ago when i kind of fell into the live the live thing because it wasn't even my idea carlos said hey let's go live on facebook and talk about whatever and i was like okay and that's how the podcast um came about so I'm with you on this, Tim. I'm happy to make the acquaintance of a lot more people in the JKD world, mm -hmm. but then some of it I can pretty much do without, you know? Right, yeah. Um, it, it just, just, before, just before we came, we came on here, I, um, you know, because here's what it's made, tell me what you make of this. This is what it's made me more aware of. Like you mentioned that there are different factions in the JKD world. Okay, well, to me, that's, that's to be expected. But right. it's, it's the amount of, a lot of the talking seems to be being done by people who only just came along. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right? They're not people from let's say this even the 70s right? right or the 70s and the 80s it's a lot of people whose um opinions and ideas to a certain degree seem to be informed by current day current day uh, mentality so right. so this is what i mean have you seen now the thing that brute that um Jean LaBelle was Bruce Lee's grappling instructor. Yeah, I mean, I saw that go Did around. Yeah, that, I mean, what is, what's your take on, on that? Well, welcome back, Sonny. Is he back? I'm sorry, I think I, I heard, I heard everything. You guys are talking about Jean LaBelle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Well, okay. So my thought there is, it's it, it's the problem I see with a lot of these discussions. We're going to start arguing over how we define words and what we mean by phrases. Was Gene LaBelle Bruce Lee's grappling instructor? Well, do we mean that? Did Bruce Lee go to the Gene LaBelle Grappling Academy and take classes? I don't know. I I've never heard anything like that. But Gene himself has said that he showed Bruce Lee some things. And why not? They were friends. I mean, as I was growing up, I was studying a traditional Okinawan karate and doing kickboxing. I had two friends that were judo guys. I had some guys that were friends that were taekwondo guys, some guys that were kung fu guys. We all got together and exchanged stuff all the time. Were they my instructors? Sure. In an informal way? Absolutely. They taught me some things. I taught them some things. So did I go to a school that they owned? No, I didn't. And did I take a class with them? No, I didn't. So, I mean, how do we define these things? Yeah. I think it's to think that he didn't learn something from Gene LaBelle, because clearly they spent time together. You're going to exchange. You know, that's just natural. We all do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand how it gets to that level where yeah. It, it, yeah, I mean, there was even stuff about, well, he probably got his black belt belt from Jean LaBelle. Yeah. from Jean LaBelle because he already had a black belt 
in judo from Seattle. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have the pictures here at the academy too, and I, I was um, I, I remember uh, Sifu Dan had told us the story of that once, and I think a Andy, I think I, I think I heard it more from you about it. I wasn't overly concerned about it, but I mean, Sifu Dan's never said, "Oh yeah, Bruce Lee had a black belt in judo." He said he, he very much liked judo, and and he tells us what throws he specifically liked from judo, and we go through several of them in the in the level three class when we're going through something like a Jiao Sao series or whatever. That so right, yeah, right. <laughs> so obviously, I'm trying to um, engage in conversation with you guys without also engaging in any anything that could be construed as character assassination. But <laughs> okay, I mean, you know, when you look at, and I think I, I got, I think I've got a good judgment. Andy's character. Actually, this is really fun because I've, I've actually not ever been face to face to meet Andy. We've never met each other this way, but we've become very good friends through Facebook. And, and actually, that's one of, I think, one of the benefits of it. I've got to meet someone like him without being, you know, having to meet him face to face yet. So I, I think his character, my character, same way, we have no interest in, in assassinating anybody's character. I actually don't have anything personally against anyone that we're talking about. They, they have opinions, they're very passionate, and that's very clear. We just have a problem with misrepresentation of someone saying, oh, well, this is what goes on here. Well, you're never here. You're not here in this building, the one I'm sitting in right now. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not here. You can't really tell me what goes on here. And you can't speak with, uh, about that with authority. But, you know, I've got nothing against um, the other factions, if that's what we want to call them. Right. And what they're doing, you know, I think they're doing a marvelous job at what they're doing. It, it looks like they're passionate. They train. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. And, you know, in the end, I think it would be fun, great to be more, more friendly. You know, I, I'd certainly uh, and I think you're doing a good job at keeping uh, trying to keep everyone courteous, which I think is, is extremely important. You had mentioned Wednesday about this being a reflection of our instructors. And and I think that's right. You know, we don't want to. Uh, I know that's something my two main instructors uh, here. Very hard for, you know, I don't think either one would be wanting to approach um the discussions and the way a lot of it has been approached yeah i mean not right. not not in a million you know and i was thinking about this before before we went live why we're, we're gonna speak for you andy why andy's approach <laughs> would be it would be the same because andy descends from rick fay right rick fay will tell you uh, he will tell you he's not that big of a bruce lee fan He's a Dan and Asano fan, right? Right, you know. So, so now, without knowing Andy, without necessarily knowing him personally, when I hear him talk, I can I can kind of deduce where it's coming from, right? Because yeah. of what I know about him. But what I find is that people absolutely refuse. To think in terms of okay, how could this have come about? Why right. would a person have said this or done this? You know, it's like there's no thinking about it. It's just paint as negative a picture as you can. In order to, I, I, I guess there must be some point that they're trying to make. Sure, and I'm not too sure what what that what that point is because just like you said uh tim i admire the passion that these guys have for their art being Absolutely. influenced by dan and asano i would because that's the way he is absolutely yeah. you know and so there's he would never say oh stay away from those guys never no not at all you know so so I look at it as here's what we have in common. What let's build on that. You know? Right. Now, if we disagree, we disagree. But I'm never gonna say something about Ted Wong or any other JKD notable. Right. And be like, oh well, he didn't know what he was saying or 
he didn't know what he was doing or he tried to say that it's this way and that what, what's there's no point to that exactly absolutely well, none yeah and it's it's i've never met him i never you know never met him never trained with him so i i can't offer an opinion mm -hmm. uh, i've the only people i've heard about ted wong from is sifu dan who described him as a very nice person mm -hmm who he never thought would say anything bad about him. So I, I don't think that he believes that any of the negativity comes from Ted Wong. Right. Directly. And Sio Shiabi. And he told me the same thing. He said, Ted Wong was a very nice, respectable person yeah. who was very kind. So yeah. that's my image of who he is. And so, and that's all I've got. And so I'm, I'm not gonna speak with any authority on that because I never met him. So it would not be fair. And again, that kind of comes from my, I guess, my academic way of looking at it, or even just logical way of looking at it, and even just um, ethical way of looking at it. It would just not be a proper thing for me to comment on, other than what I've heard. And I'm just going to go with that. That's a good impression. I like that impression. Yeah. And that's the way I like to think about him, anyway. Yeah. Andy, right. we've been going on without you interjecting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my in, my introvert has come out, so I'm like just having a good time listening to you two. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody the, the, this delves into something that uh, that we were talking about at the base of all of these confused these pieces of confusion, and you and Tim would know better than me. Um, but I, like I asked Guru Dan one time um, about spirituality and the different things, and and one of the things was a principle about reverence, about about why is reverence he's he's the most reverential person you know he sees the good he tries to see the good in every single thing um and tries to learn something from every single person um and then he you know and he says he he, he believes in giving credit where credit's due yeah so so like it, that sort of virtue that virtue or this this idea of trying to live in a virtuous way or, and be like that will lead to some confusion when especially when it comes to the whole thing is about style like, oh, Exactly. It's, it, he wants to give respect to the places that inspired something or, or something that might have uh, there are some research that may have done been done. It's it's a, out of reverence that he's doing it as much as as saying, you know, this is a major source or that's a major source or he took this or took that, right. you know, absent absent an easy way to explain it. Um, you know, sometimes the language gets taken too literally. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, and to me, that's a, that's a background. You know, I was going to say, it's like Guru Dan isn't style centric. He's reverent, he's reverence centric, and he's yeah. never going to change. He's right. never going to, yeah. he's never going to stop. He's never going to stop doing that. And in all honesty, in all honesty, there's a part of me that thinks that that's actually personally inurious to him because see, here, here's, Okay, so now I'm going to speak with authority on Dan and Asano. <laughs> That's so funny. Right? Oh my God. Okay. So the crazy. mistake he makes is in thinking that everybody else is on his same level. You see? Yeah. So he figures, he figures that he doesn't have to explain it in great detail. He'll say something and you will go think about it and delve deeply into it and come up with your own conclusions. He doesn't think that he has to say, okay, such and such and such. Now, what I want you to do is to go home and delve deeply into this. And at some point in the future, you come back to me with your conclusions. He figures that's what you're gonna do. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause that's yeah. what he's done. Mm -hmm. since day one so yeah. he figures everybody's doing this because i'm dan and asano i'm nothing special it's what i do so everybody's doing it as well no sifu everybody's not mm -hmm. <laughs> right right there, there are some people out there who for whatever reason don't seem to be inclined to think for themselves yeah you know it's hard, yeah. hard to it really if you think about it I, I think once you get used to doing it it's not hard but i think if you don't do it 
regularly or you haven't done it, it's a hard thing to do because then you got no one to blame but yourself too for right. any mistakes or perceived mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and here's another thing. Here's another fault of his. <laughs> right? He doesn't realize <laughs> I'm going to get crucified for this. He doesn't realize that when he gives credit to somebody else, like you were just talking about, Andy, that there are people in the audience who then think that that he's he's being discredited somehow. Right. Yeah. They right. don't understand. Right. They don't understand that yeah. he is so selfless that he does that. It's not self diminishing for him to build someone else up. Correct. Yeah. You see. Right. Right. So tell me what you what you make of it, because Tim, you're you're the closer to him. Yeah. I mean, that's that's very true. Um, I think some of this kind of you know, if you go back to when when Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was getting popular and coming in, you know, he saw the value in that pretty quick and went and he's, I I would have to say probably 12 or more. I mean, every single one of the Machado brothers. And then there's, you know, Otto Mago, there's, uh, Clever Luciano, and uh, there's, um, gosh, Hey Diego. Uh, you just came and do a lot of stuff with him who's phenomenal. And so, I mean, he just, he got into the art and wanted to see a lot of people's opinions on right. that. Yeah. And he does that with pretty much everything. He, he likes to see how people approach things. And so he's very much uh, uh, an academic himself in his approaches. Yeah. I think that's why he gives credit because he, you know, he's got a master's degree. He was a teacher, an academic teacher at one time. So I think that's where that approach comes from, mm -hmm. where he's credit plus he establishes relationships along the way, and he's going to honor those relationships. But mm -hmm. kind of jujitsu thing, I think that's when people were going, "Oh my God, your JKD or whatever isn't, isn't good enough. You need to look at this thing, and you need to do this thing." And I think that's you know people got upset with him over that yeah. because they thought yes. he was diminishing Jeet Kune Do and he was diminishing yeah. himself. And and, and the, no, you know, he's seeing value in something that he wants to have a look at. Right. And I'm wrong with that yeah. at all? Yeah. I, I overheard a conversation in Atlanta uh, 20 plus years ago when he first started in BJJ. And the conversation was along the lines of, what, Dan and Asano put on a, a white belt and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and started at the bottom with BJJ? And it's true. You know, you, you'll, hear, you'll hear certain people say, oh yeah, you know, Bruce Lee said about Dan and Asano towards the end, yeah, Dan's still searching. As if to imply that he should have stopped searching because, well, you sure. met Bruce Lee, what's left? Right. Well, <laughs> that's that's a quote. That, that may be a quote or a hearsay, but what's the tone? What's the tone on the on when he said it? He could have been saying it in a very positive manner. Aha. Uh -huh. Searching. Like that's right. the thing you're supposed to be doing. Yes. Still searching. What are yes. you? Yeah, you know. but see, but that, but again, it's it's what we were talking about earlier. There are people who will put as negative a spin, yeah, exactly, as possible on everything that they hear. Right. I don't get it. it so it, it takes us back to the what the one about adding styles. Oh, yeah. Sano is adding this and adding this and adding that. When? Uh, yeah, I mean, I that's a, that's a bizarre one because you know, as again, I, I teach here at the academy, and, and there's a lot of classes, and, and at no point in the Muay Thai class do we go, and now you're a JKD guy. I, I was like, what? That, that was, yeah. or WTBA representative, so even the ranking in that art is going to come from Ajahn Chai, and so I've seen the test, I've cornered people for the tests and what have you, and at no point do they go, and now you're a JKD guy. That's what that would sense they don't do that in the Kali we don't do that in the sea lot these are just different courses in different arts mm -hmm. now talk about the quote-unquote JKD approach I can give you some insight as Andy probably could and you know because you've seen it you know yourself you've studied with Guru for decades now yeah you know but that that we're just taking these things and throwing them together 
as and calling it Jeet Kune Do is just that's we I don't even know how that would work to be honest with you. I, I can't even fathom how what yeah. what someone's mind when they're saying that. I, I don't even know what that looks like in their head. Yeah, you know, and and the the thing the other thing is that you were talking about him being reverential and giving credit and what have you. That's how that multiple art class, schedule of classes came to be. Because right. <laughs> he would get involved with somebody and then instead of being selfish about it, he would start a class for that person at right. the academy. Right. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, that person is literally traveling the world doing seminars. Right. right. All because of Dan and Asano. And the best that some people can do with that is, oh, he's adding styles and diluting Jeet Kune Do. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, well, the whole the, the whole thing too, it, it bleeds into the t-shirt. Like people want to diss on why you have like 20 logos on your t-shirt. It's not it's not because you're you're studying 20 styles at the same time. It's because you're you're just being reverential yeah, right. for the for where you got your knowledge. <laughs> Every person that goes there is, has a different mix, but but it's just a sign of respect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and again, I, I hope that people who hear us talking about this don't have this idea that we're saying. Oh well, Dan and Asano is, is a perfect human being, um, you know, who can do no wrong, has never done any wrong. Everything he's ever done has been. Because I'll tell you this: I don't think he should ever have coined the phrase Jeet Kune Do concepts. Now I know why he did it. I understand why he did it. Mm -hmm. When I say I don't think he ever should have, that's in hindsight, since all these problems were created because that phrase was coined. Or was it because someone else decided to start writing original yes. concepts? I, I don't, you know, I, I think that boils down to another person who started writing that. Yes. But, okay, I should, I should rephrase what I said. I wish he had never coined it, <laughs> right? Let me rephrase, let me rephrase what my, my, my meaning. I wish he had never coined it because then problems would not have been caused for him. Yeah. Yeah. You see? No, oh, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting um or name because I've seen it in print, but I've been here at the Academy 17 years and it's just not something we say. We we don't use that phrase for what we do ever. So it's it's a it's an interesting, yeah, uh, interesting phrase. It would be kind of interesting to see kind of where it came from and all that. Maybe I'll ask him sometime when we're out. <laughs> I, I, I well I I mean Andy weigh in on this, but I think it was born out again, being reverential, and having made a promise to not teach JKD commercially. He figuratively bent over backwards to try to come up with a way to satisfy people's interest and desire to learn Bruce Lee's stuff without teaching it to them as he learned it and therefore breaking his promise. So he went through yeah. all these machinations to well, how it's like, okay, how do I put this out there without putting it out there? but making sure it gets out there so it doesn't get lost and it doesn't right. die. Yeah. You know, I think I, I think I was there at the very beginning of, of some of that. Like we used to talk about, like you would do a, a workshop in the first two hours, you do 10 different things, but it turns out really what we were doing was footwork was step and slide. Mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a commonality sort of thing. We talk about that, right. you know, and the principles of teaching disguising repetition. Right. Um, so we found these, he found these ways to be able to teach, teach the essence, I hate that word, but the, the essence of, of the art without teaching it right or wrong. You know, it seemed like that was a thing that was going on for a while, mm -hmm. um, especially on the seminar. But I mean, Tim, you know, in, L, in LA, I think it was always different, but yeah, I seem to remember. Let me ask you this. 
is it not absolutely fascinating to study something else? You, you know, so, so, so here I am, I'm training in this, I'm training in that. And then one day you come across somebody and they've got stuff and you're like, what? Is it not? I mean, is it that's like how do, how do you how do you go? Oh, it's not JKD, so I don't need to look at the, what? Right? Yeah. We we I was I was making I was making a joke about about um oh but with uh Tim, how's Salem doing? Have you guys heard? Uh, I just talked with him on the phone um two days ago. Uh okay. he was uh he's gonna write an update. Uh he's doing quite well sounds great okay uh, there's there and uh i think he's got another surgery here in june okay Come, uh bone graft and then uh, and then we're not exactly sure you know if they're gonna be sending him home send him into a rehab uh center for a little bit or what but uh he sounds great okay well give, give him my regards uh next well, time you talk to him. but so on on tuesday in class this week i was kind of making making fun uh, and i was saying yeah you know the first time i i saw this guy you know a little skinny french guy you know walking like this and i'm like nah, i don't think there's much there and then he kicks you right <laughs> five yeah. times from different angles with the same leg without putting it down right yeah and you go oh but it's not jkd so let me move on really really <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was thought the interesting, the interesting thing about studying other things, um, like it was in Muay Thai in particular. You know, in Muay Thai, um, you know, it's like you could go, yeah, you can, you can figure out how to knee, you can figure out how to elbow, but what's the most efficient way to to solve certain problems? Those little tricks that you get that yeah. only somebody who's got seventy five fights or two hundred fights or three hundred fights, the little tricks in the clinch and, you know, lifting, lifting the chin up and, and, and manipulations of the head that you're just not going to figure out with the flight time. So, so a smart person goes to somebody who can f help you fill in the holes right. Cut the quickly yeah. if, if you need it. So, I mean, I find that that, that is the fascinating thing about, about cross training and each, each one of the other area, you know, each area, uh, you know, I tend to like, I, I gravitated towards Savat over Muay Thai, did both of them, but I, I like Savat because um, I always wanted to be able to move like that. Um, I like the multiple kicking, but, and it's just, it's faster. It's already, it's sort of put together and I can take take what uh, what I need f from it without having to recreate the wheel, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, Sifu Dan said it uh, Tuesday night in class. We, we look at other things to understand what we do better. Um, so it's, we talk about the counter offensive systems, you know, you look at any physical competition, football, they look at what other teams do so they can mount a defense against it. The professional boxers are, are going to be cognizant of the style that the other boxers bringing into the ring and learning how to defend against it. So there's that aspect of looking at other things. And then you guys know the, the sort of infamous picture that if you look at it one way, it's a beautiful lady in a hat. And you look at it another way, it's a long faced old ugly lady. Yep. I, I look at it that way too. You can look at other things and you go, oh, wow, there's something else in mine. It's, it's almost, it's, it shares a lot of similar things to mine. Now I see mine different. I see possibilities to mine that I didn't see before. It's just, it's, mind broadening it's eye opening you know i yeah. i don't see a problem with it yeah okay see so so now think about this so you've been with ed parker for a while you're one of ed parker's top guys you meet a skinny little kid from seattle and everything you try on him he shuts you down and instead of ignoring that and forgetting that, right? You become one of his, right? Sure. One of his his most ardent followers. Fifty just, years, sixty years later, you got people criticizing you, right? When the truth is, had he not done that, 
would the three of us be having this discussion? I think that's um, that's a great question, and I think the answer is probably no. <laughs> There's a lot mm -hmm. of things had not Steve Winness hands are done. Uh, none of us would be having these debates and arguments at all. I mean, we might, but we wouldn't have any uh, level of experience in doing the things that we're doing. I mean, th think think about it, right? Okay, and I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll even make it personal. If Dan and Asano had not suggested to Bruce Lee to open up a little place in Chinatown, Ted Wong would never have gone in, would never have had anywhere to visit. Correct. Yeah. If Jerry Poti, Steve Golden, whoever, 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 if that had never happened, if 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 Dan and Sano had not gotten all these guys together so that Bruce would, where would any of us be? Correct. Yeah. Right. And again, it doesn't have anything to do with him being a perfect human being. Not at all. But let's be reverential. Right. Let's give credit. Let's look at it and go, I think a large percentage of this goes right back to him. Right. So now, having gone backwards and realized and accepted that, going forward, you're a little bit more respectful towards him. Right. Even well, if you disagree in some shape or form. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't get it. You no, know, I don't. I, I was, we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago and people were like really but it happened to be we were talking about filipino martial art and we were talking about about disarms right and i go okay well you know this thing we call the saplit right mm -hmm. they go yeah i go well what's the term for that they go quick release i go okay so that's a quick release i go okay so now when you go like this and you, and you and you disarm we call that strip right they go yeah i go okay do you have any idea where those terms came from they were like, well, that, that's Filipino martial art. I go, yeah. But you know, quick release is a football term right. as is strip. Exactly. Go, right. I go, you know, it's wholly possible that Dan and Asano is the person that came up with the names for these because the little the, the old Filipino guys that he learned it from, they had no name. Right. Yeah. These exactly. techniques. So now all of us all over the world that are doing strip disarm, we owe that to a single individual. It's sure. quite possible. Yeah. Well, and uh, Heaven Six, that was his mother's term for that movement because the the actual name in I think Visayan that they were using was really long. And she said, No, call it Heaven Six. <laughs> And there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mo mother, especially for the FMA stuff, mother and father really uh, influenced a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so this is, this is the other thing too, because of course he gets flack um, because it's like, oh, well, I, I've heard it expressed this way. He wanted to push the fma more more so than the jkd right and i'm thinking you remember the part about not commercializing right right so so now imagine this you find a way your let's call it your personal cultural art happens to be a really good vehicle for putting this other stuff out there because there's so much commonality and so much crossover right all yeah. right you see so so now or gerd i also add add the idea that your your great friend and instructor was really passionate about about uh putting chinese culture out there through movies and you had all sorts of discussions with them for all these years, and then you have an opportunity to put, to push your heritage and your culture out there, as well, and do and do good for your community. That's also something which is oh. which is what we're doing, you know. 
Yeah. So I think, you know, that's kind of a lesson there. It's, it, you know, this to be respected it may not be your, your thing, but, but at yeah. least you could understand it. Yeah. You, you know, you don't, but see, but okay. So now look at that. So now he's actually, when you think about it, he's responsible for what he's responsible for the, 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 the preeminence of two, of uh, two factors in the martial art world. I would say at least four, but yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big shoes. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that no, you're 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 right because um um Kev, Ken O'Neill in St. Louis. Did did you guys see this one? Um 1985 Muay Thai seminar with Ajarn Chai. Oh yeah, I haven't you watched you see that? <sighs> I just Smart it, it. yeah. God. When I, because Jay DeMarco had told me many years ago that they had the video of it, but I had never seen it. And then I, I, I forget um, how I came across it. Somebody probably posted it somewhere. And, but the guy who posted, I think it was uh, David Tice. And what he's saying is, look at this. A 49 year old Dan Anasano, right alongside people much younger than him. Mm -hmm. doing the work right you know and the 70 year old uh dennis Hano takes up capoeira and is doing cartwheels <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know because so i i i i i think you're right uh tim because if i remember correctly that 1985 muay thai seminar was Ajahn Chai's first, um, like on the road gig? Oh, wow. I think it. I think it was, and then by 1986, 12 months later, Smoky Mountain had started. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that went on for 10 years and created monsters like Rick Fay and Greg Nelson. Right, right. You know, so. So in a way, we can blame Dan and Asano for creating those two monsters. A lot of good instructors, yeah. Shame. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it, it's it's like, what's the point? What's the point of trying to break him down and 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 couch it in? Oh no, it's just historical truth that I'm trying to point out and whatever. When no. It's your spin. It's your opinion on something that happened. It's not historical truth. Right. Well, it, it, it leads to weird logical conclusions. You know, it, what is being said sometimes you think, well, you're, you're telling me that either Dan Osano is a liar, which I don't think so. I don't think there's a lot of evidence to that. Uh, or he's nefarious and up to something i don't see that i mean he's up to yeah he wants to teach a lot of people you know about culture and martial arts it doesn't sound like a terrible thing uh or you can say the same thing they're indicating about bruce lee that this guy was somehow devious and wanted to pit his students against one another that sounds terrible i don't know if they understand that that's what they're implicating but that seems to be a conclusion that can be drawn from what they say or that he was just ignorant as to what the people around him were doing when if Dan is saying one thing and the truth is this and certificates faked and all these kinds of things well this was all done when he was alive so was he that that slow at picking things up I don't think so yeah so you know it just seems like a lot of uh things are thrown out there, so to speak, and they want to see what sticks to the wall. You know, it's like, okay, well, if you put it all together, it, it comes out to some very strange potential conclusions, none of which I think are true. Yeah, and right. I, I think also that some people forget, or maybe they just don't know, because for us today, it's a big thing. But back in the 1970s, it wasn't. It right. was a garage backyard thing. 
Right. It wasn't a worldwide phenomenon, a worldwide movement that it that was the 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 you know the the the, the baby of a fantastically fabulously famous individual. It wasn't that. It was a bunch of guys, you know, in a backyard. Right. Sweating right. pads, iron and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Doing the hard work. So, I mean, again, it, to, to me, it goes back to the idea, well, thank God somebody did something to preserve it. Otherwise, where would a lot of us be? Right, exactly. You know? So, again, you look at, you you, you realize what you, you, you kind of have to, to take in, take, take on the humanity aspect of it. All right, so right. nobody's going to do anything perfectly. Right. Right? It, my take has always been people are doing the best that they can with what they have and what they know. Sure. I, yeah. I think that's always a better way to to approach things than to try to ascribe some kind of value to what it is that they've done, what it is that they've said, or, or what have you. I mean, you, you just alluded briefly to something there, um, Tim, I didn't. I hadn't even heard this. That there was an idea that the certificates are fake. Yeah, I'd seen that a while back too. That someone was saying. Uh, I, I think Andy, didn't you say something about that too? Like, there was something- yeah, there, there's a conspiracy theory because all the signatures are there. It's like Dan Inasano on one and Daniel A in another, and they're signed on the same day. And there's a smudge on one, and right. <laughs> And and and, uh, and yet he still taught for a couple of years and was, yeah. you know it's just like I don't I don't get it. <laughs> so so well, what if right? What if one day they're like cleaning up you know and clearing out stuff, and Bruce Lee says, "Oh Dan, look, here are the three certificates. Let me just sign them. You know, you fill them in whenever you want." What if it was just something? as informal as that because it was like oh you know i should probably i should probably give you a certificate you know all right well okay here are the three different ones let me just sign all of them let me date them and sign them and then you fill them in or or, or something what if it was just that because it wasn't a big deal sure or bruce Nobody, lee's, right, right? I'm gonna call Nobody, you, huh here you know it could have been bruce lee's sense of humor because uh Guru Dan told me, um, I think for his birthday once, he was questioning him about the liver punch and why it was so effective. Bruce Lee punched him in the liver and then gave him a birthday cake and laughed about it. He's like, dark sense of humor, but, you know, it was funny. And I'm like, okay. And it could have just be his humor. Sense yeah. Of humor. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't have to mean a deep, dark conspiracy. I mean, that's just the, you know, <laughs> silly. Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's it's all pretty it's all you know i think sometimes people should ask themselves what would i have done if it had been me if this responsibility cuz here's yeah. the other thing i think that people don't don't think about somebody who has had major impact on you dies suddenly right and all of a sudden everyone looks at you turn into you and you had never once thought because what well, he said, okay, go to the backyard. So now we're in the backyard, but he's still mm-hmm. in Hong Kong and he'll check in and whatever, and whatever, and whatever it was. But now all of a sudden it's like, what, what do I do now? Right. You know? And, and so there, there's in the art and philosophy book, there's the letter from Steve McQueen. Yeah. Which I think was, many right there was a lot of people encouraging him yeah him. but and, and but notice what it says i don't think it's commercializing right. for you to do it so obviously even somebody like steve mcqueen some way somehow was aware that inasano had this issue with being considered commercial right right you know steve mcqueen knew about it Right. Yeah. So now now that that should give us greater insight into 
what was going on in his mind. Okay, well, so now how do I do this? Okay, well, we'll call it the Kali Academy. Right. You know, right. that way nobody yeah, will ever be able to say, oh, Dan, you opened up a school to start commercializing Jeet Kune Do. Right. No, he goes to great pains again. The Kali right. Academy, and, and I, I think that the sign that you see in um, Way the Warrior, it's um, Filipino Kali Academy and Chinese boxing. Right, right. Yep. You know? And years later, oh, he's adding styles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, or he's, he's changing this and changing that. Yeah, he's, yeah. Oh, I do, I do, I do want to point that out um, because, uh, like, like he said earlier, Tim, Andy likes to sit back and observe, mm -hmm. and observe, right? And then I, I did actually pull it up here. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me see if I. If, uh oh. Yeah, and I, then I was probably in a pissy mood that night. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then he goes and he does. Wait, do I have it? Oh man, let me see. And will it show up in the stream? Yeah, poor uh, Andy. I'd see now. He's like, "What's coming up here?" Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't think it's this one. I got you back. Whatever. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, man. Thank you. No. no, it's not that one. Okay, hang on. I got to. I got to. I got to try to. But but here's what it is. Here's what it is. Okay, so it's the whole simple angulated attack thing oh that one yeah right okay. and i remember the first time i came across that i was like oh yeah he's right it is simple i had never thought about it but then as i read i go well it makes perfect sense because simple attacks are comprised of a single motion right yeah, so right. at some point 20 years later somebody might have said simple instead of single and maybe it, it sounded the same and so right. it became again it's not like you said earlier tim it's not nefarious right it's just the natural right. evolution of something right sure. yeah well also the and other thing about andy, that andy goes <laughs> and finds right in the uh. desert where simple has been transposed and single is written in. Right. So you would think that somebody would come back and go, wow, Andy, that's pretty good. I never even noticed that myself. I think I will now quash this discussion and let everybody know, eh, looks like I was wrong about this. Yeah. Or, or the or or the other, but the other part about it is just in all due respect, it's like I I I, I understand the uh, trying to go back and go. This is what Bruce Lee teach. I, there there is a value to that, and I appreciate yes. it. Yeah. Um. And it and I and to a certain extent, it needs to be done. I I like it. But um. But there the whole thing that it drives me crazy, and uh, this will get me in trouble, is this whole thing about the only thing that you can really trust is going back to the writings. It drives me absolutely bonkers from a and from a, like like we were talking about from a historical basis or a research basis or anything like that because because you don't know what Bruce Lee and Guru Dan and the, all these guys were how they were referring to it when they trained. It's like maybe like you're saying maybe they referred referred to it more as SDA than SEA SAA. You know because we don't know we, you know and the only I say this over and over again the humbleness that we all everybody needs to have. Is that we don't know we weren't there so let's just not take it too far and criticizing the people that were yeah right yeah well and do we understand it no matter what we're calling it do we understand it are we on the same page with it mm -hmm. uh, or right. is difference so trivial that it doesn't really matter right no it's to me it's a, a categorization thing you know I you can call it anything it's like the same with the I have categories it however you want in, in my opinion, my responsibility is to my students. Do they understand what we're doing, what we're talking about, what we mean by these things? And if they don't, I mean, there's some arts that have, 
I mean, there's a thing called just warfare, combat. How many ranges are? Well, there's intercontinental ballistic missile range, right? All the way right. down on the ground with a knife with each other range. That's a lot of ranges there in, in real warfare. So, you know, it's how you categorize it. There's no right or wrong way to do that. There's, there's teaching people and does that student understand and maybe i have to change it for another because i don't understand it the same way yeah there was that's my responsibility yeah. is to to teach that student not to be so hooked on something that you know they're concentrating on the finger and missing all the heavenly glory you know to bring it back <laughs> right yeah, yeah. I, I mean and and here's the other thing again going back to the humanity of it all guess what somebody at some stage is going to get it wrong they're going to misinterpret something they're going to misperceive something and they might not be aware of it right and they have a following and so they start you know they enunciate their misconception and their misperception but they have a following and so that gets repeated and perpetuated right. but its actual origin might not have been factual so now so you could you can look at that and you could go oh man it's unfortunate that that happened or it could turn into a big thing you know which, which is why um remember remember when chris kent issued let's call it issued a retraction where he said in the Jun Fan textbook we wrote about flowing from style to style. And he mm -hmm. says that was not the correct way to express it. That yeah. takes guts. You know, that's a guy who obviously is still in pursuit of the truth. That's a guy who obviously, decades later, is still trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to do that. He's Chris Kent. Right, right. You know, he has a unique place in the history of Jeet Kune Do, but he has the guts to say, ah, I should have said I could have said it better. Right? Yeah. Now it, it, so so I mean I, I and I bring that up just to indicate that along the way we're going to get things wrong. So Absolutely. you clean it up as you go. But this idea, so, so I mean, this idea that, well, nobody's allowed to mess up. And, and then the same thing with Bruce Lee. I mean, come on. You think he had, like Andy was talking about, you think he had it all figured out? There's no way. There's, there, there's, there's no way. He might have had a lot of stuff figured out. But to be like, in July of 1973, whatever it is that he had shown or taught or written down, that was it. And had he lived on, there would have been nothing else. There would have been no, there would have been no more direction to go in. Everything was there. And so since he died, we just deal with everything that was there and we don't use our own minds right you know we don't use our own minds we don't we don't channel bruce lee and move ourselves forward based on what the, you know the, the path that he blazed for us now it's this his life was cut off and my learning was therefore cut off i'm done I'm not moving forward. Right. Now make sure you fit into his mm -hmm. shoe, suit size and everything else too. Yeah. I mean, which what 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 aspect of the JKD mentality is that? None that I know of. Yeah. I mean, one I haven't read about yet, but that's not one that I know. Of. Yeah. I I mean I I don't get I don't get it either. Right. Um. Anyhow. All right. So listen, guys. Um. Let's put a a, a wrap on this. But again. I'll, I'll, I'll go first, but I'm sure you two will want to say it your way, too. I, I got no issues. Look, one of the reasons why 
this whole G no dialogue thing was started and continues is because I want to ask questions. And I yeah. especially want to ask questions of people who, let's use the word faction again. I especially want to ask questions of people who might be from a different faction, who might look at things differently, who might have a different or JKD origin than mine. Because that's how I learn more. That's how I increase the store of my own knowledge. I don't want to hang out just, I mean, as much as I love you guys, I don't want to hang out with just you. You know, <laughs> I want to, right? I want, look, I want to hear from the guys in Africa who are trying to do a JKD thing. Right. Yeah. You know, I right. even, I, look, I even want to hear from the guys in India because they're very intriguing to me. You know, the whole World Jeet Kune Do Federation thing. Like, I, at some point, I really do want to talk to them and, and go, okay, so, ex, you know, tell me a little about how this came about. So, yeah, I want people who hear this to understand, I do not have a problem with anybody else, even if we get engaged in vibrant discussion and I go, I do not agree with you and I don't like how you're portraying this. That does not mean that personally, I think that, you know, there's some, there's something wrong with you. So that's my take on it. You guys want to uh, say something about that? Andy, Kevin, you go first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I agree with you. And that's, that's actually something I, I was hoping to express on here too, that, uh, that, you know, I, I nothing against, the other factions, the other camps, whatever we want to call them, I still consider it the same family. In fact, here's here's a quick story about that. There was, um, I'd been in uh, Kazakhstan. That's actually where I taught the academic writing. Was at a, a there, and um, when I came come back here, uh, there was a seminar given by a guy by the name of Antonio Grisefo here in L.A. And he was teaching a lot of um, kind of very interesting Southeast Asian martial arts that he had uh, learned going around. Bokatar from uh, Cambodia, so on and so forth. So one of my, my training partner here at the time and said, hey, let's go down and check this out. So a handful of us went down there and another group came in and they were, uh, I think, a, an original Jikino group or wh whatever the, these sort of terms are. When they came in, it was funny. Griselva kind of goes, oh, hey, these guys are whatever. You guys want to fight or something like that? And we kind of looked at him like, what? What are you talking about? And it, poor kids they were young younger kids and they kind of looked at us and i mean chris bruce is like my size six four you know 250 pounds we're a couple of big dudes mm. and with other people that are pretty good size and and they're just like oh my god what's you know what's this all about and we just told him we said well as far as we're concerned we're all the same family so no there's nothing to fight about with these guys you know we're happy they're here in fact we're hoping to be friends i think there's a couple of them i actually still keep pretty regular so it's it, i don't look at at those groups as being something different Mm -hmm. We're all related, you know, we're all in the same family. And, you know, I, I appreciate and respect what they do. I don't know what they do, to be honest with you, that much. So yeah. I'm kind of glad that you would, you would suggest the video thing. So I'm able to see um, what a, f uh, a few of them are doing. And it's very, and like you said, I want to see it too, because I'm going to get ideas from it. I'm going to learn from them. See, Dan has always told us, you learn from everybody. You learn from the beginner student who, who's coming in that you're helping. You learn from your compadre, and you learn from the person who knows more than you. You learn from everybody. Yeah. And so I would, I like that. And I, you know, I want to learn, I, I don't want to learn so much from the, the pettiness, like, oh, well, here's this factoid and that factoid. I, I'm not really interested in playing Trivial Pursuit. I'm interested in training. And if you've got that type of thing, I, I'm going to dig that. I'm going to love it. There was a, a really good... Um, Wing Chun set, uh, dummy set that I think Keith Myers put up the other day. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Great detail in it. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I, I really like. And, and I respect people that are doing that. And especially if you're willing to put some video up of you doing some stuff, you know you're going to get the arrows flung at you. You've got a spine. Good for you. I'm, I'm backing you up all the way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And for my part, I just, uh, I'd, I'd go back. Uh, I just want uh, people to be respectful with each other. Um, and you know, I think Tim and I are kind of like, yeah, or we got to call you out if you're not 
if you're if you're not being respectful or not being accurate but that doesn't mean we don't like you or don't don't uh or we don't think everybody has something to share yeah. um you know i mean and i think when we all want we all want uh, a deeper deeper understanding of the material that we've got or um and uh, i think a lot of the other a lot of the other factions have and to some extent deeper deeper things that we can learn from them so i want to keep those doors open i definitely don't want to create enemies um you so know, you know it's interesting i don't know if you guys uh, ever saw this one but i think somebody had put up a question about that you know the whole thing about uh jun fan can be structured but jeet Kune Do cannot and whatever and um, then you're right and then the reply was no there is a jeet Kune Do curriculum and it was put on display at the nucleus whatever and whatever and so then um there was this whole uh listing of the Jeet Kune Do curriculum, I, th I think it was it was the the Oakland and the LA or maybe Seattle and Oakland or whatever. Uh -huh. I took a look at it and I go, well, this is all the stuff that I learned within Asano. Right. <laughs> this whole, what, yeah. is, what 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 is what is this thing? Yeah. So I I don't get it. Anyhow, all right, gentlemen. Thanks again. I'm not going to take up any more of your time, right? Uh, I'm sure we'll get comments on this. You don't have to go through them. I will. Oh. But this is probably this is probably the last time that I will be paying attention to any of the frivolity on the I Love Jeet Kune Do page. From yeah. now on, it's like, look, if if it's not substantive, I'm not dealing with it. Yeah, I, I might not delete it, right? Uh, it's my page. I might not delete it, but um, I'm not joining in. It's, well, I hear it the same way. I, I don't want to engage. If I don't feel yeah. the person qualified to be making the statements they are, I, I don't need to argue with them. And uh, I almost say it's complimentary to you. If I'm engaging with you for any period of time, it means that I, I think that you're qualified in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So. Thanks again, gentlemen. Have a great evening. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll talk yeah, to you. Thank you. All righty. You guys All take right. care. Take care. Bye. Bye.